a crime has been committed. This hair is found on the victim. It's not his hair. Does it belong to one of these suspects? They were in the area at the time. We can't give them names because what if they're innocent? We don't want to ruin their reputation. If I'm going to make a hypothesis or a guess, I'm thinking 001. Is it both brown? They look kind of plain. I think this is the one we need to explore. But before we go there, we need to really understand what a hair is. It's part of the skin. It starts in this hair bulb, a pillow. Then sheaths form around it as it's moving towards the surface of our scalp. It's a hard world out there. So these sheaths are going to harden. The outer sheath becomes the tough scaly cuticle. The cortex is where the color is, except this person looks like they're turning gray. There's some bubbles in there. The medulla is the core. At the top is the epidermis. Dermis down here. But I could stare at this picture and not really understand it. And that's why I like to draw. Because drawing kind of burns this into my memory forever. There's that scaly outer cuticle. There's a cortex where the color is. Medulla in the core. I even drew those bubbles for the gray hair. Erector pili muscles, they're going to pull the hair shaft so that we get goosebumps. We get a little warm layer of air. But if we get too hot, we get sweat glands. There's that sebaceous gland. This is where we can scar. You see, I drew a shaving nick in the epidermis. We don't scar there, but in the dermis, cystic acne. When testosterone hits the bloodstream and then stimulates the production of sebum, this waxy oil, it preserves our skin, but when it's made too fast, it backs up and we get acne. That's why products such as Retin-A, it's going to uh, thin the epidermis, shorten the neck, and so sebum flows to the surface. Pretty cool. But hey, I want to know who's guilty. We can't just say, oh, 001 looks guilty. Let's put him in jail. We have to explore it through sort of an investigation. We look at the cuticle. Is it imbricate or smooth? Well, let's just take a look. Imbricate means it's scaly, so the suspect has scaly hair. You can see tiny scales, but the hair found on the victim doesn't. So they don't really match up. Color, well, in that category, they're pretty similar. They're both even. There's no banding. Banding occurs when there's like hair products being used. So they look similar there. Medulla, if you're not sure what, or if you've forgotten what medulla is, that's where you have the core. Is it entire? Is it fragmented? Or is it absent? Well, they don't match up here because the victim, the hair on the victim was fragmented and the other one was not. So that's not a very good matchup. I'm starting to think my uh, hypothesis is not a good one. Hair quality, you're not sure what that is. Think of uh, dandruff. Okay, that's a type of debris that is formed, and we can use that in investigations. We can also use things like split ends, which um, show up really well under the microscope. All right, then we look at the shaft and the shape, you know, arch, curly, bucking, or straight. And now we're ready. We can start to actually gather some data. So I set up a little chart. Here is the hair found on the victim. So I have that on top. And this is the suspect 001. And that's my hypothesis. I think 001 is mostly closely matches. The problem is the victim hair on the victim was smooth. The suspect has imbricate. So that's not a match. I can't hold that against him. The color of the cortex was similar. They're both brown. So that's one strike against the suspect. Medulla. The one on the victim was friend, but the suspect was just plain brown. So I'm starting to take my hypothesis. Is not good. Shaft was straight. I remember that. So that's a match. Maybe, maybe we're getting there. Neither one had any uh, dandruff that I could see, so that means they match because both of them had good hair quality. And finally, we get to our calculation. So I need to get a calculator for that. 
So there was, th what, three hits? One, two, three, three hits out of how many possible? One, two, three, four, five. Three out of five, and that gives me 0.06. So my um, data here is three divided by five, which gives me 0 0.6. All right, now there's my hypothesis I just tested. My results after examining four errors. Well, we haven't done that yet. That's for you to do. And when you're done, you're going to have something that looks like, let's see if I can get it for you. You'll have a drawing up top, which uh, that took me some time, you know. We're not artists, so it's okay to make mistakes. I made some mistakes. Then you're going to have your chart here, except you're going to have four sets of entries. Hypothesis. You don't have to use my hypothesis. You can do whatever you think. Uh, you just have to go through the scientific method and then we're trying to get towards a theory because hypothesis is just kind of a guess. But with enough data, we can get to a theory and we can maybe bring it to an attorney, take it to court.